Hey guys, I hope you're hungry. Welcome back to Full Incense and War Stories. My name is Jericho, and today I'm joined by the Iceman once again to continue our journey through the Star Wars movies. So, <clears throat> so last time we made everybody upset by saying that episode four is maybe not as good as you remember it, but today we'll make everybody happy again by saying that episode five is even better than you think it is. Um, it definitely is. <clears throat> it's, if it's not my very favorite, it's extremely close between it and uh, Return of the Jedi. And, and I'll talk more about Jedi when we get to it, but um, what gives it a slight edge to me, possibly, is I feel like the prequels make it an even better movie because now we know the whole story and everything that's been building up to it. Yes. Um, but anyway, episode five, I think, has the most cohesive plot, um, some of the best dialogue, some of the best action scenes, one of the best duels, um, a really, really good ending that they weren't afraid to, um, to go dark with. It's the reason that a lot of people love Star Wars. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely any, you know, I, I, for the longest time, Empire used to be kind of like, like, episode four to me, like, I didn't used to like it as much, and definitely not as much as I probably should, but I don't know why, I, like, I've always liked it, definitely, but, I mean, everybody knows my thoughts on the originals, uh, but really just, like, the last couple of months, just my, my whole new perspective that I have on the entire saga, uh, Empire was affected also mm -hmm. in my mind and honestly now it might be my favorite of the originals yeah um <clears throat> there just is so much like um just starting the beginning of the movie um i really like the sequence on hoth it, it's really cool to see um you know the rebels like trying to scratch out an existence and it really gives you a feel about like the reach and the power of the empire that even though they just had the biggest victory in the history of the rebellion when they destroyed the Death Star, but immediately they have to abandon it all and flee to this like terrible, dangerous, inhospitable world, just out of fear of the um, Empire's retribution. And just um, like yeah, I mean, how crazy is it that the Empire even was able to find them? Mm -hmm. That is remote. Right. And. <clears throat> So yeah, it, it shows you the Empire's reach, and I, and I just like seeing um, the Rebels as, you know, their own little military organization. Like, when it goes back and forth between, you know, the Rebels in Echo Base, like, oh my gosh, they're here, and then the Empire on their Star Destroyers, like, you just see how the different militaries act, um, you know, just side by side like that. I think it really adds to, you know, the conflict. Like, you, you really see um, both sides, not just um, as, you know, heroes and villains, and, and the, the singular characters that make up the Star Wars saga, but as two opposing military forces in this war. Um, like, one, one scene um, I really liked, or I, I really like, because I still, of course, really like it, but um, I always thought it was cool. So they're on, um, they're on Hoth, they're in Echo Base, and uh, Admiral Ozzel, um, who is one of the um, Star Destroyer captains, decides to come out of hyperspace really, really close to Hoth, close enough that the um, rebels can detect them as like just a show of force, just, haha, we're here. And Vader, of course, kills him for this um, error because it just, it just gives the rebels more time to escape. But I always thought it was so cool that as soon as the Star Destroyers are even on their scopes, they know that their Star Destroyers are here, they immediately abandon all their hard work on this crazy world, adapting stuff to the cold, trying to live, suffering and freezing on this planet. Well, okay, there's a Star Destroyer here. We gotta go. That's it, because we'll die otherwise. Like that's, like, that's their main base, right? Yes, yes. That's where the rebellion is. And e even then, just because there are some Star Destroyers there, they have to pull out everything and completely give up and move and start over again because that's how powerful the Empire is by comparison, that they would destroy them if they didn't. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be like like if um, like the Pentagon, like one enemy tank showed up, or I mean, I mean there is a, a fleet of Star Destroyers, so like like a battalion, they're like okay, we have to move away from America now. We can't. Yeah, like that's that's crazy to think about. Um, and the battle itself is really cool. I like how all all the it's never like 
a war, like a real conflict between the two sides. It's all the rebels want to do is survive long enough for their um, transport ships to get away. It's just hold them off. Like it's never, oh, we can kill them all and win the day. The entire point is just to survive long enough. And I think it, it just really adds to the fight. Like um, it just, like just the, um, like the full hardiness and they're just like, well, it doesn't like all we can do is fight. I, I can't really find find the words I'm trying. I'm looking forward to describe yeah, it, but it definitely makes sense. I mean, that's a big deal too because Luke goes out and does it. You know, mm -hmm. like what what do you think he had in his mind? Like, do you think he knew he was like absolutely knew he was gonna come back? No, I mean he couldn't have. But yeah, that's really cool too that he himself flies out with um Rogue Squadron to help um. You know, to help try to slow down the walkers, and he's the one that thinks of the idea to use the harpoons and tow cables, and um, uh, wedge, yeah, yeah. wedge and Jansen take out one, and then Luke takes out one once he's on foot after he takes down the um, after his snowspeeder gets shot down. But like, like he's there. It, uh, he's not like, oh, he's the poster boy because oh my gosh, he's a Jedi, or oh my gosh, he destroyed the Death Star. No, he's just part of the rebels now, and that's cool too. That. Um, that he's not just like loose, like Han, you know, he, he's with them and he, you know, has a position of leadership and stuff, but he's not really, you know, he, he still is planning to leave and bring the, him the money back to Jabba to pay off his life debt. You know, like the, the storyline that started in episode four is still continuing. His plan is still to leave as soon as possible, but things keep making him stay. But to see him, you know, as part of the rebels is one thing, but to see Luke who is really is one of them now has really joined the re re the rebel cause and dedicated his life to it just like he has to the Jedi Order is something that's emphasized. Oh my gosh, it's more important in that battle than in any other part of the Star Wars saga because for the rest of the movies it's Luke's own story and Luke's own journey and his own destiny you know one on one with Vader, but at this time he just is part of the rebels and part of the Rebel Alliance to destroy the Empire. Do you think that if, um, basically, at least what ended up happening, Han, Han gets out of there right away, but he's getting Leia out of there too, right? Yes. If, if, if he didn't have to protect her, do you think he still would have left her when he had gone to, down to the fighting with Luke as well? But I know he was planning to leave, but then the Empire shows up. Right. So if Leia was out of the picture completely, for one reason or another, and he was just... Right. I I think he w would have left, but I don't think, I think that Leia was a big reason he came back in the first place in episode four. I don't think he would have even been there that, that far, you know? Like, I, I think, yeah. I think. She kind of, she definitely lays on a, a nice little trip on right before he leaves, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Yes. If money is all you love, then that's what you'll receive. Um... <clears throat> So, so I think that yes, if, if that were the case, he probably would not, but I don't know because he and Luke, you know, it's already built up somewhat throughout episode four in their little adventures, um, evidenced by Han being like, hey, Luke, you know, you're good in a fight, I could use you when that's not really the, I mean, Luke is good in a fight, but Han doesn't need him. So it just shows that he wants to keep Luke safe and he already, you know, feels something for him. So it's possible, but just his affection for Luke would be enough to make him, to make him stay. But I think that Luke, that Han's transformation isn't really complete until later, maybe later in episode five, but really not until episode six. I think when it's really shown is when he lets Lando use the Millennium Falcon um, in the Battle of Endor. That's that's like the proof that he is no longer in the least bit a pirate. That he really cares about the cause. That he would risk his most beloved possession just to tr just because he knew it would keep his friends safe and help the cause. So I think that that Han was still pretty far away. So once again, to answer your question, no, I, I think he would have left if not for Leia. What do you think, though? Um, yeah, I would, I would, uh, I don't know, there's part of me that I, I hopes he wouldn't. But you're right, yeah, he hadn't made that full journey of himself. Right. Yeah, at that point. He was on his way, like you said, but, yeah. I don't know. That's tough. I would hope that he wouldn't, but he, he might have. Uh-huh. Definitely might have. Um, I used to have, I, well, I probably still do, um, a Legends book about Han that talks about, like, that Chewie actually talks him into it, into coming back. So that would be an interesting dynamic, too. 
because especially oh, really yeah cool. um so you know chewie's affection for the rebels and their cause and for luke would would also be greater in the time between returning for the death star and staying for hoth so that's another thing to sort of consider that maybe maybe he would stay um <clears throat> okay so after the battle of hoth um you know the heroes all barely escape and then they split up. Luke Luke goes to Dagobah for his training, and Han and Leia eventually escape and make their way to Cloud City. So let's talk about um, Luke on Dagobah first. Um, how do you feel about that sequence? Oh, I love it. it Me too. It's <laughs> one of my favorites in the entire saga. I, I wonder, I was just thinking about this, because I, I figured this is where we're going to go next. I was, I was just thinking about, I, I wonder what I would have thought, like, because... Going into it, watching it the first time, I already knew that Yoda was a thing. He was a guy. He was a little green guy who talked back, you know. Right. So like, I wonder what what I would have thought like when Luke first gets there, and Luke is like, I'm looking for I'm looking for somebody, and Yoda's acting a fool. Yeah, <laughs> found someone you have. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, that, that's so cool. Like, what a neat like already he was testing us. Yep. Yep. And Luke fails, like, terribly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... The the scene... Yoda... Yoda, I think... I don't like him as much as a lot of Star Wars fans do, even though I really do like him. But he's so quotable, and so, like, just the way he carries himself. I think Yoda in Episode Five is by far, by far the best we ever see of Yoda. Like, I don't... I think it's the prequels that make me not like him as much. I think, um... We, we, we mentioned it before, but I think him dueling as much as he did was a mistake, and there are a couple other things. But when you listen to him teach about the Force, you feel that it's real. You know, more, more than anything else, when he describes the nature of the Force and how it connects, just as everything about it is just breathtaking and then like i said so many of his lines are quotable and the, the last time i watched episode five um i thought about one line in particular that i don't really see quoted too often but when when yoda first is able to levitate luke's x-wing out of the swamp after luke had tried and failed so many times and then this tiny aged green little thing is able to do it he says i don't believe it that is why you fail like ah it's so it's just indescribable just the power that Yoda has um, with his words to, to shape the story of the Force and the story of the Jedi and the story of, you know, the nature of the light side and the dark. Teaching Luke and teaching us, you know, really what that means is so important and it informs, you know, everything that comes after. Mm -hmm. you, you really can't say enough about it. It's probably Luke's training on Dagobah is probably one of the very best sequences in any of the Star Wars movies, um, to me. Absolutely. I, 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 and it's probably not super interesting to hear us just keep agreeing with each other, but <laughs> <laughs> nothing to add to that. But the topic is, uh, Empire Strikes Back is really, really good, so I don't think there's a lot of disagreement to be had. Although, um, right, right. I think Luke's vision, when he duels who he thinks is Vader, and then he cuts that mask off and it's himself. I think that that kind of does not come off very well. It's cool. It's almost too vague. Like, what are, what are, you, what are, you, what are you trying to say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, 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 what's just happened? First off, why did it happen? Oh, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, if he if he is getting a hint through the force that Vader is his father, okay, that's well well and good. But he's gonna find out for sure in like a couple days time. So in, in like less than an hour's time for the audience. So I don't really know what the point of that is. If if he's seeing, I also see that as like it's gonna be if you keep if you keep messing up. Right. Yes, that, that, that's the other uh, possible explanation that I see. And that, um, I think I like a little bit more, but I think that's less obvious. I think that's us reading into it. I think that it's supposed to, but I, I don't know, maybe not, maybe not. I guess both are, are, equally, are equally valid. But just the fact that um, we're kind of unsure and would, would argue it is um, pretty, I don't know. Yeah. It just goes to show in such an excellent movie. And it's not like I hate it by any means. It's just kind of not all that it could be. <clears throat> um, another sequence that I thought didn't work 
as well, or another scene, I guess. I think that C-3PO's character is at his worst in episode five. Um, he's really, really annoying. And like, I mean, it, and so, sometimes he's funny and like, like him, like kind of, um, you know, messing up Han, trying to, you know, flirt with Leia and all that stuff. Like, you know, that's all well and good. But I don't know. I, I don't really, like, when he's on a little too slapsticky, like, his comedy and the way he's presented and, like, the stuff he gets into. And then especially once, um, like, like Chewie has him on his back and it's like, oh, well, you have to take care of me. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, like, a little... Um, I don't know if I've really said it in any in any uh, videos yet, but one thing I really um, hold kind of dear, I, I really hate the concept of uh, comic relief characters. Um, I think that they're they're really really lazy and a big crutch, and um, I don't like them. And I think that that's where C-3PO kind of gets it to in Episode Five because in Four he was also R2's translator and he also was sort of like Luke's conscience in a way, like talking about, well, hey, maybe we should stay here. Like, oh, it's so dangerous, all that sort of thing. Like he mm -hmm. he was able to be sort of an audience insert in some ways where Luke was not. But but now he's just uh, goofy. I, I don't know. It, and again, it's not bad. It's, it's nitpicking one of the greatest movies of all time and probably my very favorite movie of all time. But it is something that I always think about when I'm watching it again. Like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel that way about 3PO in every single one of the movies. <laughs> every instant of screen like time. I, d I, w I wouldn't want them to be out of... I wouldn't want them to, like, just take him out. But I don't care for him at all. I, his um, reduced role in um, episode seven, I think, is is probably for the best. <clears throat> okay, so um, so at the same time as uh, Luke has his training on Dagobah, we have Han and Leia's romance really blossom as they escape from the Empire, make their way to Cloud City, and I think that um, it shows what. Anthony, oh my gosh, somebody just, named Anthony just killed me. Anakin and Padme's relationship could have been, like, if it was still written that well or, or you know, whatever the reason was that Anakin and Padme did not work out, I see it in Han and Leia's romance as being just really, really believable and true. And we mentioned in our, um, in our episode three discussion, I think, that Anakin and Padme like are, are more or less like there's never really a question that they'll be together but especially before you know that luke and leia are a sister are a brother and sister but like even besides that like you don't know for a fact that han and leia will end up together by any means right yeah because i i really do I mean, still at that point you think that maybe she could still end up with luke mm -hmm. they've, they've shared two kisses now right and we're certainly a ways away from knowing that they're related mm -hmm. be alert so um, that's that's just a, yet another thing, and then their dialogue between each other is really, really excellent. I said in my episode four, um, in our episode four discussion, that I thought Han was at his best in episode four because of um, I just I really like seeing him as like more of the more of the scoundrel and more of you know not not so obviously you know a, a hero in the making. But his his back and forth with Leia is also like you, you really can't say enough about it. Just like like when they're on Hoth, and then. Um, the, the scene with their first kiss that uh, 3PO interrupts when, um, like, you know, there's not enough nice men in your life. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's really well written and romantic and perfect, and I love it. Ooh, yeah. Is my response. <laughs> you could use a good kiss. <laughs> and Han would know how good of a kiss Chewbacca is, that's for sure. He would. <clears throat> so uh, the movie um, unfolds before us, and then everybody gets to Cloud City. So, um, what do you think? Uh, tell me about your opinions on the character of Lando. He's—I mean, he's cool. He's, he's a cool dude. I mean, you, you're not going to be played by Billy Williams and not be cool. You're mm -hmm. not even intended to. Uh, right. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not like super wild about him. He's not one of my favorites. Like he is for other people, but he serves as a purpose. Mm -hmm. I do like this too. I like the idea that Han had like they're meeting up with an old pirate, 
friend of his. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. I think that's that's one of my favorite parts of his character. And it adds more of a dimension to Han. He doesn't seem like the person that would have lots of, you know, old friends kicking around. Right. And, like, when they reference, like, uh, that's a long time ago. I'm sure he's forgotten about that. Um, just stuff like that is, is cool to see. It just, um, just adds more characterization and depth. And it's not, it's nice to see people that are not, I mean, uh, uh, Lando, of course, gets embroiled in, in this movie. But to see some people that are not involved in the, um, in the Galactic Civil War, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so then, um, the climax of the movie, of course, is the duel between um, Han and, Han, uh, oh my gosh, between Luke and Vader. Which, um, again, is another sequence that I think is, is, is so widely beloved and for good reason. Um, I like how it's a good mix of Vader dominating Luke, but also being continually surprised. Like, like just when Vader thinks he has Luke completely figured out and that he can toy with him, uh, Luke proves him wrong. Um, I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, just, yeah, I do like it. I do like that, definitely. I mean... It's just realistic. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, that's what he would do. Right, yep. Yeah. yeah, both of them behave as you would think they would. And, and it's it's cool to see it, you know, from the point of view of um, Vader as Luke's father, to, to see him almost being, like, a proud parent, like, oh, impressive, like, hey, you got me there. Like, I don't know. It, it's just... And the novelization, he means it. Yeah. Uh, like, he's like, wow, yeah, like, he really was impressed. Definitely. I think that's cool. Mm hmm He wasn't just being like, oh, nice move. <laughs> yeah, alright. <laughs> alright, jerk. <laughs> it's a pretty good impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then, of course, Vader reveals that he is Luke's father um, in a really great scene. Oh, I forgot to mention this earlier, and it's totally, totally off track, but I just thought it was cool. Um, when when they do the scene in the cave and it's Luke's face in the Vader helmet, he actually was standing below the set and just poked his head up to do it. That's how they did that scene. Isn't that wacky? That's, I have no idea. That's really cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, you know, he reveals himself to Luke and, um, cuts off his hand, and that's basically where the movie ends. At a really dark time, Han has been captured and imprisoned in Carbonite, and that's another beh behind the scenes thing. The reason Han was put into Carbonite, or one reason why they went that way with the script, is Harrison Ford felt very strongly that his character should have been killed off. So um, that was a way for the writers to explain, oh, I guess he just didn't survive, um, if they could not, if they weren't able to make the negotiations work for him to return for Return of the Jedi. So, <clears throat> right. so Han is in Carbonite and his fate is uncertain. Luke just lost his hand, and now we learn that um, you know the, the the great hero is the son of the most evil villain. You know we we really have seen and known, and the future of the whole of the whole Galactic Civil War is very much in jeopardy. And I think I really was so incredible. Also, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, please go ahead. I just want to say like that moment. Like that was another thing. Like. I didn't know much about Star Wars before I'd ever seen it, but that was another one. Is uh, I am your father, obviously. That's a, that quote is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Imagine going to see that the day Empire comes out, not knowing. Like, how would you? How would you have felt? How would you have reacted? Like, I, I feel like I would have rejected that at first. Mm -hmm. like, what? No, absolutely not. Right. He's lying. You big jerk. Yeah, it's done so, and, and nobody knew about it. Even in the script, it, it was right. only when they actually filmed it did people, did people that were there find out. Yep. So it was like like the first huge, like I, I would say it's probably the first huge spoiler in the history of blockbusters, or at least one of the first. Oh, what, right. I mean, I, I guess I can't I can't really say that. I don't know anything about anything, but but surely one of the most impactful, like. Like to this day, like like um, like little kids that haven't seen any of them yet, that somehow have avoided seeing, you know, I am your father. Like, I just imagine, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a moment! Now, I I'm glad you brought it back up. We should not gloss over, you know, for, like the most pivotal that's moment. <laughs> that's nuts. And I mean, really, last time I, I, I went to the the movies, which was just a couple weeks ago, like I really tried to just soak that moment in. 
mm -hmm. which, which I've never really done. Just like really trying to experience it. I just I got chills. Yeah. And that's just it's nuts. That's cr even knowing that it's Anakin under that mask. Knowing that now, even then, like I was able to just like wow mm -hmm. that's a big that's a big moment that's that's it, oh. just the way it's all done like the environment and, and luke barely clinging onto the thing and like he's bloodied and bruised from his from his fight with vader and it's like you killed my father no luke i am your father like uh, oh that's so good i love star wars <laughs> it's neat <clears throat> so you talk about the writer for a second lawrence kasdan mm -hmm. as a person oh my god what a, what a visionary. And that guy, he did Empire, what, Raiders of the Lost Star, mm -hmm. Force and, Awakens. Did he do Jedi also? Did he write it? I don't no, know if he wrote Jedi or not. That was Richard Markhand, I think. Or okay. maybe, or he directed it? No, Ar Arvin Kirshner directed it. I think he wrote. Yeah, right. Um, Yes, and he's helping to write the um, the Han Solo uh, yeah. prequel movie too, which it, like, it, that's all it takes for me to like have hope for it. You know, like yeah, it's incredible, incredible. Empire Strikes Back is easily like like even though I might maybe prefer uh, Return of the Jedi on some days, Empire Strikes Back I think is undisputably the best written of any Star Wars movie. Like at least in terms of plotting and dialogue, if not like unreservedly. Yeah, I can see that. <clears throat> the music uh, is amazing too. That's actually the first time the Imperial March is actually never played in A New Hope. It doesn't. It's not until Episode Five that it's first played. Um, oh, when, yeah. when the when the Star Destroyers mass over um, Hoth, we hear it for the first time. It's just so so powerful and so scary and menacing. I don't know, Empire Strikes Back is easily one of the best Star Wars movies, easily one of the best movies ever made. And it's a joy to be able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, but do you have any, any closing thoughts? Uh, I want to go watch it again now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm sure we'll think of stuff later. Maybe, maybe when we're doing episode six, we can, uh, we, we, we might be able to bring some stuff back up. But uh, until that time, you don't like. Um. Knowing that there's discussion. Not really. <laughs> um, we, we talked about uh, 3PO and the the sequence in the cave on Dagobah. Those are like the two things. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I, we talk about what we're doing. Like? But like, Sorry, can't be bothered to pay attention to, to, to your own program. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I guess there are probably other like little nitpicks and quibbles here and there, but when a movie's that great, it, it's hard to, it's really hard to find fault. A lot of puppets. A lot of puppets. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, what's that kind of animation called? Not claymation, but like stop motion. Stop motion, yeah. Yeah. A lot of stop motion, even even in all of the uh, the special editions that have been made. We, uh, by God, we're leaving those stop puppets in there. <laughs> but it doesn't really. Uh, I have this uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that episode five fares a lot better than episode four in terms of um, maybe visuals aging, though. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And not just because it's a three years, um, three years closer to a modern day movie. Right, which is actually a lot of time in the movie making. Mm -hmm, definitely. Time. <laughs> time in the movie making what? time. <laughs> That's what they call it in, in the business. <laughs> it's like dog years. It's three years. Seven. Seven, three. Money. Anyway, that'll do it for us today. Uh, we'll be back soon with um, our discussion of Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, which will more or less wrap it up. We already did Episode 7 a while back um, when we were also joined by uh, Holy Diver and Science Century. We might um, revisit it in a little while, but um, that sort of remains to be seen. But I, I, I do think that's the plan. And then after we're done with Jedi, we're going to start doing some um, different Star Wars topics. So if you have any ideas for those, please feel free to leave a comment below, and we'll see, you know, we'll see what we can do. 
But as always, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Um, more stories like this one come out every Tuesday and Thursday, but we have all sorts of content here on the channel, something every day and something for everybody. So thanks again to Iceman for joining me, and thanks again for watching. I don't know about you guys, but we're full.